Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to build an Upper RV Enterprise AI chatbot using the Upper RV Data Toolchain for AI. Let's dive into it. So today I prepared for you um, a small little challenge. Uh, it's all circling around a company called Pixel Proovy. Pixel Proovy is a deep fake detection company that is using AI as well as other technologies in order to uh, detect fake people on the internet, social media, YouTube, you name it. I set up this company uh, to be a company that has multiple employees, one in particular that we're going to get to know a little bit better today, which is Kevin. Kevin down here is the IT operations manager. With a background in uh, programming, he's been tasked with bringing generative AI tools to the entire organization, which is great at start, but then getting into the implementation phase, Kevin has been facing some issues and we're here to help him. Kevin has been tasked with building three uh, Gen AI projects, free Gen AI chatbots um, into his organization. The first one is going to be a personal assistant, which is going to serve as a POC for the rest of the organization. So a proof of concept um, that we the organization can safely deploy personal assistance for each employee. The target of this chatbot is to basically understand all of Kevin's personal identifiable information. Uh, understand his performance records, his company profile, as well as things about his salary or his compensation package. The next chatbot is going to be a general company AI chatbot. That means that chatbot should know about the company policies, about things like the onboarding processes, or any other general information that should be accessible to every single employee in the company with ease. Lastly, we're going to help him build a pixel proofy developer bot. That means a chatbot that knows about the proprietary source code within that organization and is able to help developers, for example, new developers or developers that have been shifting from a different project, to now get up to speed on the source code quickly. Let's dive into it. So if you follow the link on the GitHub, you'll find this notebook at the very front page. And if you follow the readme, you will find all the information about the challenge and the different chatbots in more detail explained. But that's not too important right now. The one thing I want you to focus on is the Upper RV Data Toolchain for AI workflow. So we're going to build these chatbots as follows. First, we're going to use the toolchain to connect to the resources of Pixel Proovy, the company itself. They're working in the Google Suite, which makes it super easy for us to just use the Upper RV Google connector to connect to their Gmail, their G Drive, and all the other Google Suite resources they are using within the company. Then we're going to create the first data set. Out of that data set, we're going to use the filtration features of Upper RV, namely using their permissions and datership ownerships understanding of different file types, as well as the PII detection classification feature to detect sensible information within that data sources and make sure that doesn't end up in a chatbot where we don't want it to be. For example, that public facing chatbot. Once we've identified the data that we want to ingest into a chatbot, we're going to pump it through the AI pipeline to make it available in collections of a VV8 cloud vector database. That VV8 cloud vector database basically serves as a data storage unit for AI projects, more specifically for large language model, to retrieve relevant information with ease. Afterwards, we're going to use that vector database to then Query the information with the help of embedding models from Hugging Face and feed that into large language models from OpenAI, all glued together in a Python chatbot user interface that I've shared with you as well in the same GitHub repository that you're looking at right now. So let's get started. The first prerequisite that you had got to have is either a running sandbox or a local instance of our data toolchain. If you have any questions about setting it up, Watch the video below. In my case, I have a running sandbox instance right here that I can log into like this. In preparation for the video, I've already scanned and loaded the Pixel Proovy IT drive as well as connected to Kevin's personal email account. I'm going to use those data sources now to browse for the files using the same features that I was talking about earlier and create those data sets that I want to feed into the Gen AI application. I'm going to go to the Browse tab and do a little bit of data discovery. 
So I can dive deeper into the same here and I can see how there's a Google Drive connected. Uh, I can see the IT Pixel profile and I can see the face recognition team as well as all their accounts and all their data which lie with the administrator. I can query for different criteria and see all the files that are within my system. So I can see here different programming files, Python files. I can see performance review documents, PowerPoints for marketing, and all different kinds of data. So let's go back and think about what we need. The first AI jetpot that we wanted to build was the Kevin Personal AI Assistant. So how do we do it? Well, fortunately for us, Aparavi provides an easy way to just filter for the permissions of the data of a single user. So we click on the click permissions equal to Kevin. And here we go. We can now see all the data that Kevin has access to. In this case, we can see that Kevin owns data on the Google Drive, but as well on his Gmail service. So with that information in mind, let's go ahead and create a new tool chain. The first thing we want to do is we're going to start using the data that lies on the drive and funnel all the data that's within that drive into our Gen AI project. Here we go. So give that a name. Kevin's drive data. And now comes the next step. Now we want to connect it to a VV8 cloud instance. For that, we need a couple things. As you can see over here, we need a host, which is basically a URL REST endpoint and an API key. So let's go back to the GitHub repository. If we look here and we scroll to the wiki, we find a page that tells us about how to set up a VV8 Cloud Sandbox instance, how to get an API key, and uh, basically get all the parameters that we need. So we're just going to click here. And that will take us to this website here, VV8 Cloud, where you can sign up for an instance. Or if you, like me, already have one, you can just enter your account information. and your passport, and you're up and running in a couple seconds. Under the cluster tab, you can see all the information that you need. So in this case, I'm going to copy the REST endpoint. Copy the admin API key. Give this a name. and then choose a collection name. For the collection name, it's important that you don't put any spaces between uh, the letters. So in this case, I'm just going to name it Kevin's Drive Data. And then another important step, now we have to choose the embedding model. That is the mathematical model that's going to translate all the text that we input into vectors in that vector data space. We're going to choose all mini LM L6 V2. And that one, we're going to keep it for all um, other chatbots that we built as well. So I'm going to click Save here. And now, as it's grayed out, we know that now the Upper RV tool chain is connecting to the VV8 Cloud instance. We're going to go back to the, to the VV8 screen. And we can already see when we click on Collections, we can see how now there pops up the name of the collection that we just created, Kevin's Drive Data. Perfect. So the initiation step worked. Now we go back to the data toolchain canvas and we click the little run toolchain button here. Click OK. And now we're running and executing that toolchain, which means that the data is pipelined into that cloud collection. That might take a couple seconds. That depends if you're running this locally on your hardware. This might take a little bit longer. For our sandbox instance, we've reserved some very powerful GPUs. So I don't expect this to take longer than maybe one or two minutes at max. Now it already finished. Perfect. So what are we going to do next? Let's go back and revisit the GitHub repository. 
Let's have a look where we're at in our workflow. So far, we've connected to the data set, we've filtrated the data set, we've pipelined the data set into a VV8 cloud collection. And where we're at now is we got to spin up that Python notebook that I created to start up the user interface for the chatbot and connect it with the necessary API keys. So if you download that repo, it comes with a chat.py file, which I've opened right here. That chat.py file has two configuration parameters. One of them is a config JSON that holds all the API keys from Hugging Face, VV8, and the name of the embedding model. Yet again, you find all mini LLM L6 V2. The other file, which is named LLM settings.json, contains the OpenAI API key and some more parameters. So we can choose the model, we can choose the system prompt and the user prompt. If you have a look into the wiki, you will find a more detailed run through, which explains you how you can configure each of those parameters and basically make them more useful or make them twist the way your chatbot is going to behave. In my case, you can see I've already entered all my API keys here, so I'm good to go. Once you download this, you will have to find that you will have to enter those individually and then you're able to run this. You don't need to do any changes in this chat.py file to have in order to make it run besides running the pip install requirements file first. I'm going to show you real quick how to do this. Just open up a terminal, maybe build a virtual environment. And then you can type in this command pip install requirements dot txt. And here we go. In my case, you can see it's running, but it's telling me that the requirements are already satisfied, which is because I've, in preparation for this video, I have already installed all of those. For you, you'll need to run these one time before you start. Once you're all set, you can just hit the start button and it's going to spin up a Gradio user interface instance on your local host. All that really means is you have to enter this URL that is displayed in your console here. You can either click it directly or copy and paste it into your favorite browser, and then you're good to go. In this case, now I can see it's running, and this is what it looks like. So right now, I don't have any collection in the Select Collection tab. This is because I have to refresh once. Now it's connecting to the VV8 Cloud instance and locating all the collections that I have currently present. So now I can see, aha, uh -huh, I have Kevin's drive data here. So now with Kevin's drive data connected, I can start asking questions about that data. Hey, um, I'm wondering which position Kevin holds within Pixel Proby. Click on send. Now it's going to go back, find the relevant information within the vector database and come back to me with an answer. So here it tells me Kevin Mitchell holds the position of operations manager at Pixel Proofy. This information is sourced from the Kevin employee profile document. Already quite useful, right? I can also ask more questions. I could ask, um, uh, so how was Kevin's performance in, uh, let's say, Q4 2024? Now it goes to say, Kevin's performance in Q4 2024 was likely aligned with his overall performance review conducted in January 30, um, 20 of 2025, where he was received a meets expectations rating. Key achievements during this period include overall logistic planning, improving our vendor management and deploying training program. So it seems like Kevin has been doing relatively well. Okay, so in this tutorial, we learned about the challenge, how to use the data tool chain, we worked through the workflow architecture diagram and we learned how to connect a Google Drive and extract the data from the Google Drive all the way through a VV8 vector database up until the user interface application in Python running on Hugging Face and OpenAI. See you at the next one.